Hello, welcome back. If you didn't catch my last video, make sure you check it out because I am talking all about the quick sampler. And in that first video, I talked about how to import sounds and how to manipulate them in the display area. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about slice mode. And I'm also going to go through some of the modulation settings via LFO, the matrix, pitch filter and amp. And that is all in this video, all about the quick sampler. So let's crack on. OK, so let's look at slice mode and we're going to start by importing a loop. Basically, when you're in slice mode, it divides the audio file into segments so that each segment can then be mapped out onto the keyboard and then you can play those slices independently as you're playing along to a track. So I have the same chords from last time. I've imported a bass sample from Apple Loops and created a quick sampler track with that as well. And I've also changed the tempo. So in the last video, the example that I gave was a sort of terrible house thing, whereas this is more down tempo. And you can see there that there's a nice sub, there's the chords that I had before, but this time they've got a warble to them. So I've sort of tweaked sounds. I'm going to show you how I've done that later. Now, the power of Quick Sampler, I think, in my opinion, is the fact that it is an amazing creative tool because you can drag in samples whilst you're in the middle of producing and you can experiment with audio files. And one sound can quickly become something completely different that will be unique to you and therefore the quick sampler can be a very very quick route to creating music that's unique to just you. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is take this loop that I've got from the Apple Loops library and I'm going to drag it into the sampler and drop it on optimized. The sampler then analyzes the transient points and puts the transients in dependent on the sensitivity slider. So the lower the number, the less uh, sensitivity is, the higher and the more slices are, are created on various transient points. Now you get different modes, so you can choose to have the sensitivity determined by uh, beats or you could have equal divisions or you can do it manually and you can add it manually under any of the modes, but I'll show you just in manual. So all you do is you simply click on a transient point or anywhere in the file that you want to add a marker. You can then grab that marker and move it around, or you can grab it at the top and move it around. To get rid of it, double click or right click and delete slice. The other thing to notice is on a marker, if you go down to the bottom, there's a little playhead and you can hear what the actual marker sounds like. OK, so let's just go back to Note Transient. And I'm going to show you a couple of other things. If you hold control, you can ignore sensitivity. Let's say, for example, I want to change the sensitivity, but I really like this. As I come down with the sensitivity slider, you see these two have not disappeared. So, so you can keep markers exactly where you want them without any hassle as you're moving the sensitivity slider. And if you want to deselect them, you can just go respond to sensitivity. So that's really handy. Moving along, this is something I think is a really great feature. You've got your start key so you can decide where on the keyboard or pads you want things to start. But you also have these options here, chromatic, white and black. Chromatic will just be every note on the keyboard until the samples finish under white it's just the white keys so as I play the white keys on my keyboard each sample gets triggered or you could set them up so it's just the black keys all right moving along we have this feature here which is called gate and gate relates exactly to the release of your ADSR in the amp envelope when you play the key as long as you hold the key or when you let go of the key the note will stop so if I uh, if I play this note without gate, the the transient the the slice doesn't get gated. Whereas if you switch the gate on, you can see here I've got the ADSR released to zero, and it's just 
determined by how long I hold the key. Now what's really cool about this is if I do play to end, when I play the key, it will play the sample all the way to the end. But again, it's related to the release. So if I shorten the release, you can see that when I press the key, the release or the play to end is related to the length of release time that I had. I think that's a great feature. Okay, moving on, we've got flex, which was the same as before, but in this case, you can change the relative speed of each individual sample. So this is, just with this on its own, you can create some really interesting sounds. On that C1 key, I've got a slight clip on the end and I might want to get rid of that, that little clip. And the way that I do that is by using the fade function. And you can see when you click over the start or end marker, if I click on it to stick it to the interface, you can see I've got fade in length and fade out length. I can bring the fade out length so that I no longer have that clip. Now what's important to know is that your fade out length becomes the fade out length for every single slice. So it's not just this one slice, you're putting the fade out length for everything. So if I increase the fade in length, everything is fading in to 114. So that's a really useful feature. You can either use it to get rid of clips or you could also use it in a creative fashion as well. All right, so let's take a look at another thing that I think is really cool. You see this, when you hover over the bottom portion of the uh, clip, what you can do, you get this little arrow and you can, if you click and hold, you can drag it to the arrange page and what Logic will do is it will create the all the slices for you and you can then just play it back and it will play the beat. But of course we don't want to just play the sample, we want to be able to do different things. So you could either move these samples around or you could start to create your own sounds. I want to show you a couple of things that I love about this plugin and it's something that I've discovered which creates more interesting patterns for your beats and it's creating this kind of delay with the release time and it comes when you use play to end. So let me just show you what I've done. I've created a beat from these slices and it goes like this. Now what I can do is go even further with this. I've got follow tempo, so the first thing we could try out is different speeds. next thing we could do is we can use play to end. Now what happens when you use play to end is it triggers the release. So the, the sample, the slice plays and then as I showed you before it continues to play until you get to the end of the release cycle. This is it without. and with and with the track okay so let's take a look at the filter section and this is where the fun starts so all we do to switch it on is switch the on button kind of obvious you know what all this stuff does cut off resonance drive adds distortion and then you have your envelope depth knob which relates to the envelope beneath it. You can see here that pitch has its own envelope, filter has its own envelope, as does the amp. And with the, with the depth knob, you can either go plus 100 or minus 100, and you can see you get this orange 
bar that goes around the side which is really useful because you can actually see visually what's going on. One thing that I really like that they've added to the quick sampler is you no longer have to hold alt or command, can't remember which one it is, to get it back to zero. Just double click, bang, it goes back to zero. That's really cool. Okay, so you have all the same filtering that you have in the fat effects and the step effects, as which is which is really good. So now we've got the pattern going, we can sort of kind of really, really start to shape it. Okay, so I want to show you the pitch envelope. Same as before, you have your attack, decay, sustain and release. There is a great feature in this where you can choose to have just attack and decay or attack and release um, or even add hold as well. In this case, I've gone for just the ADSR and I've got the pitch is going straight up for 280 milliseconds and then dropping back down. Now listen to the initial transient of the chord as it plays. So you see it stays on the same note. Now if I bring this up, you see we're going up in cents. So we're actually going to raise the pitch. If we go negative, you'll lower the pitch and you can see it relates directly to the course. So now have a listen again and notice how the, the pitch spikes upwards on the initial transient. Now what I could do is actually lengthen this decay time so it takes longer for the pitch to drop back down on this sustain note. Just from one tiny little sample, I've created something completely different to what it originally was, which was a housey type synth sound. And now it's this kind of quirky, dubby uh, chord pattern that is totally unstable in its tuning. Okay, so let's take a look at the LFO and modulation matrix. So I'm using the bass sound that I've got, which is just a sample imported from Apple Loops. It's a kind of subby thing. Uh, I've got a filter going on and a bit of release on the envelope. Now what I want to show you here, just like most things where you have your LFO modulation matrix, you have your source, which is the LFO, and you can select from a whole different bunch of sources, including control wheels, keys, velocity, and in this case I've got LFO1, and then your target. And you see that you can basically pretty much target any part of this instrument. In this case I'm targeting the pitch to create a subtle vibrato. And if I bring the slider up to again you've got a uh, hundred percent and minus hundred percent. In this case it shows it in pitch because I've got pitch selected. But you can see here as I increase the slider the orange outer ring gets uh, bigger and bigger. And as I play the pattern you can see the pitch is, is oscillating backwards and forwards, determined by the rate. Now there's a really cool feature which is the fade in feature. So I can determine how long does it take the uh, LFO to fade in and I can also determine how long it takes to fade out as well. And you just click on the button here. So you can make it a lot more subtle if you want to. Um, now the other thing is in the modulation matrix for this track I had the slider quite low because all I'm wanting to do is create a subtle vibrato to go with the awkward tuningness of the other parts. Let's look at some of the other parameters and I'm going to demonstrate with LFO2. So we've got rate, fade in and then we have our different uh, waveforms just like you have in a lot of LFOs and you can decide whether you want any of these. I've got triangle. Now what we have here is you have two different options for unipolar and bipolar and the best way to, do, to show you that is in the modulation matrix I've got LFO, LFO to set up to target the drive dial 
So as I play a key or as the notes play, notice what happens within unipolar mode. The white dot will start at this point here and go up and go to the left. So it's it's basically positive. And then if I set the matrix to negative, so you see it's only ever going one way. So it goes down and then back up. And then if I set it this way, it goes down and then back up. Now, if I put it in bipolar, what happens is that the modulation matrix now will go both ways. You can see that uh, the orange ring is almost all the way, it's all the way round. So you see, I'm now going both ways. So we get positive and negative as it's going backwards and forwards. So that is really handy and it can create some quite interesting patterns. There's another thing that I want to show you with the phase. So when the note starts, it will always start from the point at which the the dial is set unless you change the phase position. So if I show you at zero, notice that the dot the white dot starts here at 50.3%. And if I put it at 360, because I've gone all the way around, it starts at 50.3. But if I put it, let's say, at 180, halfway over, you can see now the phase point at which it starts is the opposite side. So this is really useful. Every time I press the key, it will always start now from that point there. So now if I set it at 34, you see it's starting sort of kind of sort of halfway in there. So the phase point is really useful because you can either start from the uh, top or you can start at the bottom or you could start anywhere in between. Let's look at trigger mode. Trigger mode will allow you to, every time you press a key, it will always trigger from the same point. So if I'm at zero, it's always gonna trigger from this point here. If I switch it off, the oscillator, every time I play a new note, will just continue to play backwards and forwards. It won't re-trigger from any one point. So key trigger is switched off, the oscillator just runs free. So as you can see, the quick sampler is an amazing piece of kit. You're going to have so much fun using this thing. You can literally create an entire track with just the quick sampler and come up with something really unique and interesting. I've imported Sean, I've sliced him up and spread him across the keyboard and want to show you just kind of where I ended up. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know that you're gonna love the quick sampler. What's not to love about it? It's quick and easy to use. You can create endless sounds. I really hope you've enjoyed these two videos. And if you've liked this stuff, hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate you watching the videos and take care and see you soon.